What's up everybody, Axel Fuentes here and welcome back to my channel. Please join me on my final ride with XPO. I'll be cutting in time-lapse footage as I speak. Anyway, I have a lot of life changes going on right now. And uh, the two most important ones are, number one, I have left XPO. And number two, I'm moving out again. Okay, quick editor's notes. So here I'm about to say the biggest reason why I left XPO. But really what I'm about to say here is the second biggest reason why I left XPO. The actual biggest reason why I left XPO is because I'm tired of being a dock worker. I got a CDL so I could drive a truck, not so I could be on a forklift loading other people's freight. Okay, back to the video. Now the main reason why I'm leaving XPO is because when I first started there, about a year ago, I was very easily influenced and very impressionable. And I, was, I really cared about what other people thought about me. And I still do to some extent, but it was to the point where I let somebody get in my head and I let them make me question my self-worth all the time. And I hate that it took me over a year to realize this, but I'm explaining this so that anyone going through something similar can understand what I went through so they don't make the same mistake. That's the main reason why my health went downhill, just because of letting somebody get in my head. Somebody who I thought was my friend. Somebody who was there for me on numerous occasions, yet still would turn around and make me question who I was. Now, I can leave the past in the past, which I will, because if not, it'll affect me for the rest of my career. But that is the main reason why I'm leaving XPO. Reason number two. The job was just completely burning me out. I'm 24 years old, and I'm not getting a chance to be 24 years old. I'm working my life away already, and I'm not enjoying my life that much at all. And with working nights, it made it impossible to see my friends on a consistent basis, even at all. And also making music, I've had no inspiration to make music. I think in a year I've worked on maybe a song, which is just kind of sitting there in my computer untouched. So I lost most of my creative aspect, which is also why I haven't really made any videos, because that creative side of me was blocked off with, you know, poor mental health. And on top of that, XPO had a lot of policy changes recently, and a lot of management changes, and other types, other problems of that nature. And then when Yellow Corporation shut down, we picked up a lot of their freight. And a lot of their former employees as well. We had a, uh, right around, the, my last week we had like, six or seven former Yellow Corporation drivers join us. <clears throat> but the freight level still got incredibly overwhelming, and I also got stuck with a bad bid. Once a year, all XPO drivers bid for what kind of run they want next year, whether they want to go to, um, to City or pick up and delivery, or whether they want to be on, stay on line haul. And I just got stuck with a bad bid. When I put in my bids last November, I was hoping to see Detroit every night, but um, oftentimes the freight volumes up there just got overwhelming. And there's a lot of other drivers who I worked with from my home terminal who didn't really, didn't really want to do the whole teamwork thing. They rather wanted to just worry about themselves and go home and leave everyone else behind. But that's just a problem you got to deal with when you are working at a place that relies heavily on seniority to do anything, and when a lot of times people are just not held accountable for poor choices like that. Now I'm not complaining about any of this because it, all of all of my experience at XPO kind of shaped me to seek better options as far as my career goes. I'm going to a company where I'll make a little bit less money, but I should have a little bit more free time, which is kind of what I was hoping for. I still wanted a job where I was going to be home every day, and where the workload would be a little bit lighter. And like I said, I'm 24, it's just me, Don't have I don't have a girlfriend, I don't have any kids. I, I have my own place, but that's really the only, and, and my truck, but that's really the only, like, commitments I got as far as, uh, as far as finances go. So I'm in, I'm in okay financial shape to make this career change. But I'll talk more about the company that I'm going to, uh, once, once I actually start there, you know, do my orientation and my training, I'll discuss more about it. But, yeah, that's the biggest change that I'm heading into right now is my job change. <clears throat> now... Most of my coworkers at XPO have been very supportive of this, and uh, they've all they've all kindly given me advice that I can take to my next job. 
because I spent a year with a lot of these guys and gals, and most of them have, you know, most of them have a lot more job experience and life experience than I do. I was the third youngest driver working there. And a lot of these guys and gals have families, they've had multiple other jobs in the industry, so they all had some pretty good advice to give me. And I also have to say, in the year that I worked there, I met a lot of great people who just taught me a lot in general, not just, you know, now that I'm leaving, but throughout my time working with them, they taught me a lot of, a lot of things that I can not only use at work, but also apply to my life. And to any of you guys from XPO who are watching this video, I thank you guys for, for everything you guys did for me, everything you guys taught me, and everything that I can... All the experience that I can take with me to my next job and that I can apply to my life. Now the next big life change that I'm heading into is I'm moving out again. I only lived at this apartment for a year, but it's just been nothing but problems. Starting right off the bat, I had to wait around four months to get a working dishwasher. And once I got the keys to the place and um, I had a buddy come help me move in, we examined the place and there was a lot of dirty fixtures, there was a lot of uh, broken things here and there that looked like they just tried to like hide with a little bit of paint. And yeah, I had to wait four months for a working dishwasher. When my parents were, when my parents were helping me move in, my mom used the dishwasher the first time we had it, and it was brand new, and it just kind of quit working. And so that's what, right away was when I made the call about the dishwasher. And I kept waiting and waiting. I had maintenance come in and take care of other things, but whenever I asked them about the dishwasher, they kind of acted like they didn't know. And then I finally got a new dishwasher. No, I finally got the dishwasher I had repaired, and the repair lasted about five minutes, and the dishwasher broke again. And then, finally, I got a dishwasher, after waiting for months for it. And then the roaches started. Yes, this place has roaches everywhere. And I've had pest control come in, but the only problem is they keep... Uh, the biggest problem is that the, the pest control company that comes through here, the management of the complex is supposed to call the tenants and say, hey, pest control is coming in today, they should be here around this time, but they never have. And with me working nights, I sleep during the day. So this leads to pest control coming in on a random day and pounding on my door, which I don't know why they do that. I, I, have, I have a doorbell camera, they can just ring that, but I guess that makes too much sense. And so they keep coming in to spray chemicals, but whatever they're coming in to spray requires me to be out of the house for a good three to five hours. I don't have anywhere else I can stay, and if I have work at night, obviously I have nowhere else I can stay. My parents are both, you know, working, so I can't stay, I can't crash at their place for a few hours, and that would completely disrupt my whole, my whole routine that I have set so I can work at night. On top of that, this place is really clustered, there's way too many people living in this complex. The buildings are huge, like I mentioned earlier, the buildings have like 16 to 24 units in every building, three floors, and uh... The neighborhood kids are often running around unsupervised, they often leave trash all over the place, they're usually messing around outside by the cars. There's a playground behind my unit and um, a lot of times they leave trash back there all over the place. Uh, Halloween night was a nightmare because the outside lights in the, in the hallways, those are not controlled by the tenants, those just come on in the evening and they stay on overnight. And uh, in every neighborhood usually when there's lights on, on Halloween night, it means that there's candy there. So. My neighbors and I had to put up a sign that said, No candy, sorry, to, so the kids would stop pounding on the door the whole evening. Uh, <laughs> on top of that, there's a lamppost outside all over the place that don't work. There's potholes everywhere. Uh, tr fallen trees in some places. And the worst part is that management tries to find whatever reason they can to just come in and inspect your unit. Like, we had, we had, the previous management we had before, they were, every month, they were giving us, sending us emails saying, hey, notice to enter, we're gonna enter your house at, uh, at so-and-so time to inspect. Every month, it was something different. They wanted to inspect this, look at this, they wanted to measure this, they wanted to do this. And I'm sitting here like, can you guys just leave me alone? I, I'm, I'm paying, I'm paying fourteen seventy five a month to live here, and you guys are bugging me every, every other month on, every month over something stupid. And so that got incredibly annoying. And... The worst one happened recently when the we got new management and they decided for whatever reason to um, they decided to redo all the kitchens and bathrooms. And so they sent a letter and email to everyone telling them that they were going to enter our houses on so and so date between between nine to five to measure out our countertops so they can uh, do renovations on the bathrooms and kitchens. 
and I emailed them and asked them if that could be rescheduled to like a Saturday morning when I get off work. And they said, nope, this is mandatory and has to be done now. So we're going to do this now and we're going to enter your house. And uh, <laughs> I still have the notice sitting on my countertop in the kitchen and they still have not come. They're about um, a month and a half late now. So I don't think they're going to. They're probably going to wait until after I move out so that they stop having problems with me. And then there's the issue with the keys. So when I got the apartment, they gave me one key and they're supposed to have a second key. Now, then they emailed us, uh, they emailed a bunch of tenants, uh, right, a couple months ago and said, hey, we need you guys to make your own copies of your keys and give us that second copy because all of our keys, copy keys that we have of your guys' are bad, and if you don't comply, we're gonna drill out your locks. So I really don't know what it is with this place and, uh, wanting to invade everybody's apartment. I honestly don't know what's going on with that. Needless to say, just to avoid problems, I went and made a copy of a second copy of my key, and then they showed us the copy they had of my key, which was broken, along with multiple others. So whatever key copying machine they use, which is probably a which is probably a hunk of junk. But yeah, that just kind of in short covers all the details and problems I've had over here. I still have roaches all over the place. Um, pest control has still not found the has still not caught me at the right time, so they can come in and and spray out the chemicals and stuff. But now with my job change, I'm not going to have weekends off, so they'll hopefully be able to come in in the middle of the week when I have off time. And they'll be able to come in and do whatever the whatever the heck it is they need to do. <clears throat> and also, more importantly, this this apartment is only around 500 square feet. It's a, one, it's a very overpriced one bedroom. And it just kind of got really cluttered in here after I moved in. Uh, so the place I'm moving to is a two bedroom, where the rent is surprisingly cheaper. And I'll have an extra 400 square feet to play with. It's right around 950 square feet. And the uh, complex is a little bit smaller. There's not as many buildings. So it'll hopefully be a little bit more comfortable to live in. Aside from all that, I've been trying hard to get back into the music production scene. And it's just been incredibly difficult. Like I mentioned before, with my mental health in the toilet, throughout working at this job, I've reached a horrible creative block. But hopefully I'm trying to get back into it now, because I was discussing with some friends, you know, about where stuff started changing for me, and it was probably when I stopped making videos. That kind of gave, that kind of blocked my creative side. So I'm going to do what I can to avoid getting to that level again, so I'm going to, this, this is part of that, I'm working on bettering my mental health by, you know, getting creative and start making videos again. Unfortunately, it was so long since I uploaded that I actually lost my ad partnership with YouTube. So I'm not really counting on this to be a, any sort of income, it's just a little income on the side if I can get that back. But if I can, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to be making good money at the place, I'm, at the job I'm going to. I'm still going to be trucking, I've decided that I want that to be my career and I'll do music and videos on the side as a hobby. But there is still the possibility in the future that I may want to like attend an online music school or something like that. Or if I find like a band that I can play with or an orchestra I can play with, I will absolutely do that if I'm able to make the time for it. Well, that's all I got. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you for your time. Uh, if you got any input on if if you're watching this video and you got any input on anything I've said, please put it in the comments below. I'll gladly read what you got to say. Well, that's all I got. I'm gonna get out. Of here. Axel Fuentes.